Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to do the biopsy procedure to obtain the sample for the small fiber testing. It's really, as you'll see, a very simple procedure. Uh, you can do three or four sites in less than 15 minutes uh, by yourself. I've, I've done many of these by myself. Obviously, it's faster and easier if you have an MA assisting you, but uh, again, a very straightforward procedure. The trickiest part is making is getting the specimen into the vial, making sure that the specimen isn't crushed or injured and that it's safely in the vial and, and doesn't get crushed, and we'll go over all that. First, I'd like to show you the kit. Um, almost everything you need comes in the kit. The only thing that you'll need to provide are gloves. They don't need to be sterile. Uh, a tape measure and an mm. insulin syringe with, a, uh, with lidocaine, 1 or 2 percent lidocaine. Um, many people like to use with epinephrine. That will help decrease the bleeding, although I've done these without epinephrine and it, it works just fine. So sometimes it's hard to get the uh, lidocaine with epinephrine. So the kit is self-contained. This is all sterile, the kit of course. The procedure is not a sterile procedure. It's clean, it's a no-touch procedure. but. Um, The kit will contain the biopsy punch tool, of course, and uh, I'm just going to glove up and then uh, show you that. Um, the biopsy punch tool, forceps, scissors, which sometimes are needed, I'll show you where those come in, uh, betadine swabs, alcohol swabs, and of course, gauze pads. And then. Um, Inclusive dressings. Regular band-aids can be used. I find these larger uh, band-aid types helpful, um, as I'll show you when we um, dress the patient's wound. Uh, you can use a surgical marking pen. You can use a magic marker. Those just tend to bleed. Different people have different preferences. I do minimal marking and just sort of use my landmarks to guide me where we're going. Um, in the lower limb, there are three standard sites. So the site that has the most data and the most well-worked-out normal values is what we call the distal leg, uh, and that's 10 centimeters above the lateral malleolus. All of these um, injection sites are on the lateral aspect of the leg. So there's the lower leg, there's the distal thigh, which is 10 centimeters above the, uh, the edge of the leg, the patella. And then there's the um, proximal thigh, which is 10 centimeters below the uh, iliac crest. So I'm going to mark the three sites, starting proximal and then moving distal, um, 10 centimeters. Again, once you start cleansing, you tend to obliterate or smudge your marking. So I'll often go off to the side and sort of give myself some guidelines. You'll see the kits come with both betadine and alcohol. Some people just use the alcohol. Um, I have to say the infection rate is very low, extremely low. We rarely have complications. Um, I do tend to use um, the betadine and the, uh, and the alcohol. So I do the betadine first. You beforehand ascertain that the person doesn't have any allergy or beta allergy to iodine or betadine. Um, ascertain that there's no allergy to the uh, local anesthetic, to the lidocaine. So as I mentioned, these are the commonest sites. There is a fourth site on the leg that can be done, and that is um, on the foot, just over the uh, extensor digitorum EDB muscle. That does not require measurement. We just sort of do it over that muscle. And that would be here. Uh, there are normative values for this site. Um, so I, after the beta dine, then I come across and clear the way with the alcohol. It's a 
a small needle, there's very little pain with this procedure. People get numbed up nicely and quickly, and um, they may feel some pressure with the punch, but there's, there's a little discomfort. For most of these patients, or pretty much all, have had an EMG beforehand, and I usually tell them EMG is far more uncomfortable than what we're doing here, and they uh, agree with me. The only trick to numbing it up is you want to biopsy an area where you've not poked the needle. So, of course, pretty standard raising a bleb, which you do for, for any number of procedures. But um, again, coming from the side, and then I'm gonna raise a bleb. And you see the needles here, and I can go there, and I will not have affected the skin. Um, it varies how much lidocaine you need. You, you can see here that I'm not needing very much. Some people, the lidocaine gets absorbed. Um, I'm making generous blebs for the purpose of you being able to see it, but also then it makes it easy for you to see. And it, as you can uh, observe, you don't need clear markings once you've got a nice discernible bleb. There's the issue of how long to wait. I do not wait very long. I find that anesthesia sets in very quickly in, in, in almost every patient. Um, usually I'll uh, start with the distal site in terms of my biopsy. So I may, in, in my normal practice, I may anesthetize that first. Basically, I'll anesthetize the three sites and then go, by the time I'm done doing the third site, I'll go back. I guess having said that, I don't necessarily biopsy three sites in every patient. Uh, it's going to be based on the clinical pattern, but as you'll see on our website and other material, you want to biopsy at least two sites, a distal and a proximal site, so you can get information about length dependency. So you can poke the site and see if the patient feels it. I mean, they may feel pressure, so you ask them, do you feel like I'm poking you with a pin? Yeah. So here's the, the tool. Um, Basically, it's a, like a cookie cutter. So it's a three millimeter punch, and you're gonna take out a core of skin. Most of the time, as you'll see, probably, the skin will remain in the patient. Sometimes it comes out with the biopsy tool, and you have this trocar that you push through and, and, and to remove it. Um, with your uh, kit, there are also, uh, vials of fixative. Um, Zamboni fixative, which has a shelf life of a, of a year, so you don't have to worry about refrigeration. Um, you want to have these labeled. There are formal labels. I'll often do a quick and dirty labeling and just write my three sites so that it's clear what I'm doing. Again, when you have an assistant, it's a lot easier and they can handle that for you. Um, as I alluded to, the trickiest part is making sure you get the right specimen in the right vial. So you wanna have your vials at the ready. I'm gonna biopsy the distal leg site. And you take your tool and very straightforward. The key is you want to advance it all the way. When you do the distal, when you do the foot sight, you, you want to be careful about going too deep, but all of the other sites, certainly as you move proximally, it's certainly not a concern at all. You can put this tool in as, as deep as you can, which is basically the metal all the way in, all the way to the green plastic. And, and you want to get as deep as you can because that's going to allow you to remove the specimen easily. So you put in and you just rotate back and forth while you produce or, or do downward pressure. And as you see, you pull this away. There may be some bleeding, but now you can see the little, the little piece of skin, if done well, uh, by putting, by going, again, the key is going as deeply as you can it basically will very often just fall out like this. So you want to, you don't want to pinch the surface where the epidermis is. You want to get the subdermal tissue. There's usually a little tail 
and you just pull the specimen out and hold it by that. Sometimes it'll be uh, adherent, and that's when you would use the scissors to just undercut. Um, again, you put this in the vial. This is the trickiest part. You don't want to submerge your forceps because uh, if you get fixative on it, it can, it can irritate. It's not harmful, but the patients can find it irritating. Since I seldom need this, I'll often use this trocar to push in, but as you can see, this is already, or you might not be able to see, but the specimen has already fallen in. And the key is you want to make sure the specimen is in the vial, submerged in the solution, and not sticking to the edge, because another pitfall is, is that you could pinch it when you screw the cap on. So you screw the cap on. Again, this is already fallen. Sometimes it floats. So you, sometimes you want to turn the vial upside down again and make sure that the, uh, that the specimen is free floating. And then we've got this nice little core of tissue. You, you know, going deeply as you can with the punch allows you to easily remove the specimen so there's no tugging which will stretch and distort the specimen and give us artifactual results when quantifying the nerve fibers. The other reason to go deep is if, particularly if you want to do a sweat gland analysis, those are located uh, deeper in the, in the subdermal tissue and um, the, the, the deep as you can go with the punch, the better chance you are to get specimens. So you want to check and make sure there's a hemostasis. Again, it's usually not a problem. I've never had to put in a suture or, or do other means. I'll take a gauze pad and place it over this and then use the bandage, putting it over the gauze helps to provide a bit of a pressure dressing and the patient can use that or put, keep that in place till the next day and they can change to an ordinary band-aid. And um, post biopsy care instructions are included with the kit and uh, handed out to each patient. So that is the procedure. Again, then you could go on and do the, um, the other two sites. Um, this will conclude the video for now. Obviously, without the chatting and, and demonstrating, you could see these three punches could be done um, can be done relatively quickly.